Morning everyone. So many of you have uh, written to me and uh, commented on the video saying, Charlie, uh, what's your thoughts on this new police bill? This new draconian, harsh, anti-protester police bill, which has passed every level of becoming law. I think the last level we have is for Queen Liz. She needs to give it her John Hancock. She needs to give it her signature. Now, we're all very aware of the scenes in Bristol uh, three days ago when, um, th yeah, a thousand strong crowd were out protesting against the new police bill and uh, there was chaos, riots, destruction. Uh, 20 police were injured. But, you know, when, when the media are trying to build up a picture of a really violent protest, the things they classify as an injury can be quite, you know, mundane. Like, you know, a, a scrape on your cheek. Oh, he's got a paper cut on his wrist. Oh, or, oh, he's got a bruise on his leg from wrestling with that protester. He's injured. So, yeah, I think um, really there were two police injured. I think one fractured something and another one broke a rib. That's not pleasant. Breaking a rib never happened to me. So, what are we to make of this? Well, 2020 was the year of the elite and media and uh, powerful uh, media baron organized protests. 2020, the year of the organized, let's be angry at the man, let's keep everyone fired up. We had Black Lives Matter on the back of George Floyd's death. We've had the big lady protests in um, regards of the Metropolitan Policeman, Mr. Cousins, who murdered and dismembered. Sarah Everard, the young lady in London that everyone's looking for. There's been never-ending anti-lockdown protests, which I was lucky enough to um, witness many of them last year and bring them to you in my videos, most notably uh, my video called The Day Everything Happened. Good video. I met Caspian, the young communist. Very funny. So... 2020 being the year of the mass protest, of the, the kind of disregarding the COVID legislation to go out and protest. Government, and also, oh, let's not forget Congress, you know, the QAnon, Donald Trump, um, the kind of like, how do I, how do I describe it? It was a cheesy Walmart's McDonald insurrection, wasn't it? A bunch of uh, middle-aged, uh, red hat, make America great again. Um, deep level conspiracy theorists who believed Donald Trump was some sort of god emperor saving the world from uh, child abuse and satanic elites and Epsteins and so forth. We don't talk about Donald Trump being friends with uh, the former Epstein. No, we don't talk about that. So governments around the world, it might look, you know, on the surface of it, it looks like they're all talking to each other. Let's bring in these anti-protester things. But to be honest, all across America, the police have struggled. I mean, if you want a good example of how abstract and ridiculous it all got, type into YouTube the Seattle murder hole. And it's stu the stuff of, like, Lovecraftian nightmares. Like, truly an incomprehensible, unknown horror lying behind a set of trapdoors with um, SWAT teams and riot cops on the other side with a bunch of green and blue-haired anarchists with nose piercings trying to break through the murder hole. Do you know why they were trying to get through the murder hole? To set fire to the Seattle courthouse. That's why. Where's my coffee? Where's my coffee? Hey, mom! Hey, mom! Where's my coffee? I'm late for a meeting downtown. Coffee? Coffee? Fucking Canadians. You know, the, the one cure for the leaf is the rake. The day of the rake is coming soon, Canada people. So, concentrating here in the United Kingdom, I know all, all over Australia, New Zealand, America, Canada, they're all bringing in these anti-protest laws. So, um, I've uh, skimmed over the highlights, because it's a 300-page document, I'm not going to read that shit. A lot of it is in dry, repetitive, it needs to be compressed. It needs to be compressed by a fucking video editing software compression, so it can have like 10 or 12 bullet points. So here's how, here's the Vichian view. Here's the Vichian analysis. The police bill that they're bringing in this 2021 piece of shit 
it uh, unfortunately gives the police extra powers. Do the police need extra powers? No, they do not. Are they able to do their jobs effectively if they have the willpower with the, the laws and the tools available to them? Absolutely. Are the police lying when they say they need extra powers to like deal with things? They're not lying. They're just not using their imagination and they're being lazy. It is like basically the, this legislation was brought in because of Extinction Rebellion. That um, Nordic rune with the hourglass Nordic rune looking like something from an early Third Reich meeting of incels getting together to talk about ancient Nordic pagan fucking rituals. Extinction Rebellion, as you know, over many days last year brought London, Manchester, a few other cities to a standstill. They put a sailboat, a yacht, in the middle of the busiest junction in London, Oxford Street and um, Regent Street. Busiest junction in the in the UK. They put a sailboat there. Everything was shut down. You had hippies gluing themselves to tram lines, to buses. You had hippies getting their crusty Caucasian dreadlocks and smelly incense up in everyone's faces. And your average Londoner, be he a bloody street sweeper or a cockney fucking trader, he's got no fucking time for these fucking Tarquins and Victorias and Elizabeths coming down from fucking the Cotswolds to uh, tie themselves to a fucking train. The police do not need extra powers. They're not using their imaginations. It's very easy. If you um, have two people in the street or one person or even a hundred people in the street who are acting in a very antisocial, non-productive, some may say psychically destructive, if not physically destructive manner, they're intimidating the public. It's very easy to go up to these people who are demon infested and to um, create a situation where the demon cannot help but break the law. It will snap at you, it will react, it will shout, it will swear, it will do all sorts of really bad things. And uh, then you boom, you kick them in the chest, you give them the slap of Damascus, or in our uh, fluorescent uniformed buddies, just put the handcuffs on them, read them their Miranda rights, and off you go. One more ghoul off the street. Do you need more powers to do that? No, 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 no. Now, look, the truth about things when you're getting just propaganda from, like, the government to the police versus uh, the propaganda from the activists, the, you know, the swampy extinction rebellion, let's cancel that motorway building construction. You know, the truth is somewhere in the middle. I've skimmed over the police bill. The bits I like are... Uh, Harsher sentences for child killers. There's a few other toughening ups as well for uh, people who hurt children or do very bad things. Am I going to complain when a child killer gets an extra 10, 20 year sentence with no daylight and no freedom? The very one thing which makes every other thing that's great worth having? Freedom? Should child killers have freedom? No. So fuck them. Good on you, police bill. But on the flip side as well, you know, giving the onus, the the discretion to the senior cop on the scene, uh, whether a protest is uh, obstructing or it's seriously annoying or whether it's gone on too far or whether it's too loud. These are not decisions that a senior cop should be making on the ground. I don't know who the fuck should be making the decision as to whether a protest has gone on too far, but I'll give you the Vichian view. We have to be fabric of reality boxers. And uh, you're going to get the, the shit pies are going to come flying at you. The fucking bullshit pies, whether it's from your colleagues, friends, enemies, criminals, crackheads, government, police, bullies, fucking warped people. Those shit pies, you got to fucking duck and dive. The punches, they're fucking, you know, you're going to get a few in the face. You're going to get fucking bruised up and messed up. But you gotta duck and dive, guys. You gotta, you gotta be quick on your feet. Keep those knees bent. Don't stand in one place. What this police bill, when you look at the meta narrative, the metaphysics of the situation, what it's doing, what it's really doing, it is preventing the LARPing of uh, insurrection and revolution by young middle class black clad anarchists. I mean, to me, when I was growing up. 
and even now, as a slightly jaded 40-year-old, a protest to me should be a, a bunch of civilized people holding placards that go through the city center, making a lot of noise for the day, eight hours, five hours, ten hours, whatever it is. They have a big rally at the end, some speak, burping a bit here, big rally at the end, some speakers, and then they go home. What the police bill is trying to avoid, is trying to discourage, are your Extinction Rebellion, you know your Trustafarian, you know your um, gap year, you know, well, upper middle class to upper class children of the gentry who c can go squatting in a city center roundabout for a week or a month or a year and not suffer any consequences. You know the type, the professional protester called crusties. They have dogs on strings. They're a bit crazy. I don't judge. I'm a bit crazy. But they're a bit crazy in that way that they require the emotional catharsis of fighting with the police, of saying, of getting handcuffed, of saying, look, I'm a victim. And, you know, and fair play to them. I've never really thought they required the police bill to stop them, and I still don't. So what the government and the police are trying to do is to, um, they're killing cosplay. You know, the Che Guevara, black-clad anarchist, Viva la Revolution. They're killing cosplay of insurrection. Either now, now you, they've taken out the middle ground. Like, now you've got your middle-aged, middle-class nurses and doctors going on a rally, support the NHS, blah, 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 going home after a little rally and a little talk. Or you've got mass organized underground insurrection groups which actually blow up infrastructure start assassinating uh, leaders start assassinating anyone who could fight back against the vigorous powerful testosterone fueled revolution for example the ira for example the tamil tigers in sri lanka for example the indian resistance against the british empire but they, the british don't like to talk about that they like to say oh no it was all mahatma gandhi very peaceful very peaceful no there was a massive Indian insurrection against the British Empire. You know, it's um, the um, the founders, the, the head Zionists, when they were blowing up hotels in uh, Jerusalem and um, Tel Aviv. Don't know if it was called Tel Aviv back then, but they were blowing up British army barracks, hotels full of British politicians. So, you know, when you're serious about taking over, I guess you're an underground anarchist insurrectionist and you've sacrificed your life, you're ready to die and be imprisoned, you're ready to fucking fuck some shit up. Now, in the middle, that if you're not like a middle class student going in a protest with a placard, or if you're not an IRA fucking Paddy McGuinness fucking blowing up the Queen's cousin at that hotel in Brighton, am I confused? No, they tried to blow up Maggie Thatcher in the hotel in Brighton, didn't they? Killed a few, but... Maggie just got a bit of a plaster dust in her hair with Dennis dragging her out of the but when did they when did the IRA blow up the Queen's cousin? Was it on a yacht? Did they shoot him? Anyway, I'm not praising the IRA. I'm just comparing the IRA, the Irish Republican Army, to the Bristol protesters, the people that uh, fall for it every time. The police will leave a police van and they'll walk away from it. And what they'll do, they'll go. Hey, Associated Press, hey, Reuters, uh, oh yeah, and uh, London Evening Standard, Daily Mail, Daily Express, there's an abandoned van at the corner of fucking Soho Street and Danzig Street. Next thing you know, you've got all your Trustafarian anarchists, Molotov cocktails, smashing the windows, graffiti, and your average normie, your average NPC... Your average, everyday English, Scottish, Welsh, Irish person sees that and goes, Oh, we do need a new police bill. Look how violent they are. 20 injured police. Two of them, seriously. We need a police bill. And it happens every single time. You know, it's so obvious, like, how it happens. The police have been doing this for hundreds of years. They are the the um, physical arm of the British state, that they're not there to maintain total equality and divine fucking freedom for men. They're there literally to maintain the Queen's peace. 
And how do I know this? I've been arrested countless times for destroying the Queen's peace. Sorry, Queenie. Oh, take a coffee break. Many of you remember 10, 12 years ago when I used to go out um, with my former filming buddy, Danny Shine, in London. We'd be out, a couple of guys with megaphones, a camera, two cameras. That was it. Two men, two cameras, two megaphones. Two girls, one cup. No, two men, two megaphones, two cameras. And we go out, we do the blah, 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 whether it's in Camden or fucking Piccadilly or Westminster. Police would always come up and they've made, they've done their pigeonholing. They've said, oh, it's a protest. So they come up because now they're official. Oh, my job as a, as a British police person is to maintain the Queen's peace. Part of that is, is facilitating protest. That is my job. So they would come up to Danny and I and they would say, oh, hello. What is it you're protesting about? So we can do the notes and we can facilitate your protest. We're like, we're not protesting. And the police were like, well, what are you doing? We're like, well, I don't know. We're two men hanging out. That's it. As my video title, just hanging out. We just wanted to hang out. When the police pigeonhole you as a protest, then you fall under the new police bill fucking rules. So my advice for all my um, psychonautic fucking spiritual journey fellow human beings is if you're not protesting, the new police bills don't apply to you. Now, on that note, that's I, I hope I've been very fair. There was a commenter a couple of videos ago, very shrill. Not sure if I know who it is, but uh, accusing me of being a police fuck on the police payroll for not uh, talking about the police bill. Now, two points to make on that. I wish I was on the police payroll. I sometimes look at detectives that I've seen, and I see them a lot. These are cool motherfuckers, man. Do I wish I was a police detective? Yes, sometimes I do. Would I like to solve intractable crimes to put really bad people behind bars, whether they've killed kids, sold heroin to kids, whatever, they're do whatever the fuck they're doing, to put bad people behind bars? I'd love to be a fucking police detective, but I never will. I'll be honest, I'll never will. Never will be. Do I wish I got money from the police? I do, but I don't. So these are my views on the police bill. I hope this satisfies everyone out there. And uh, thank you very much for watching my channel. This is Charlie Veach. You know what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, this is that awkward second. Cut, cut.